Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Water Conservation on Farms. At St. Jude Farming Projects, we have a method that we use to conserve water and we conserve most of our water from groundwater surface runoff. So what we are going to see is, or what we are seeing is, how we conserve this water and how we do that trick. So, in front of us we have a very large compound. Whenever it rains, all that water comes flowing down. And whenever it flows down all the way from the other side, it has to be filtered through the stones before it reaches the final stage where it is actually stored in an underground water tank, which we shall sit down. So we are going to see water flowing through in case the rains come. In case they don't, we now do not have the rains, but we are going to see how that process is done. So all the water will flow through these stones, that you, like you see them here. These are pebbles, white pebbles, that can help us filter water. And by the time it reaches the other side, it will all be clean. For a poor farmer, this is really very, very important because it saves him time or her time. It serves energy because it doesn't have to keep running up and down collecting water from springs. And again still, it serves him the money he would have spent uh, paying off people so that they can do that activity. So that's what we are going to see, how the water flows and how it is cleansed through sieves all the way to the underground water tank. On a rainy day, the water is coming from the compound. And all that water is being filtered through the pebbles that we have in the compound. The pebbles are cleaning the water stage by stage up to this very point. When the water reaches this point, most of the silt that has, has survived being cleared through by the pebbles will actually have to stop at this point because of this big stone that is actually helping us trap most of the silt to remain part of this, uh, on this side of the, of, the, of the tunnel. So when water on this side of the tunnel, when the silt remains on this side of the tunnel, water will actually pass by the sides of the big stone and now proceed or continue its way into the underground water tank that we are going to see on the other side. So we are having, I mean, we are, we are going to see how how water now seals through the final stage to enter the underground tank on the other side. When the water gets into the underground tank, it is actually seated on a polythene bag. The polythene bag that actually the water sits on is, 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 is of gauge 1000 mm. 1,000 millimeters in thickness. So that is the, the type of uh, polythene bag you should use because it's way much stronger and it's long lasting. This well has been in existence for the past 13 years. It's been able to handle 39,000 liters of water just underground from the surface runoff. And that water silts, when it's, it comes inside, the silt will settle onto the bottom and the water will remain on the top. And then the poles, the poles that are where we are standing right now, those poles are actually eucalyptus poles that are way bigger in size and way much stronger to hold or to hold the weight of someone who stands on the top or to, wait, to, to hold the weight of water or whatsoever has been placed on top. Now, in the water, we have to treat the water using Moringa seeds. We crush Moringa seeds into powder and then we use that powder, put it on top of the water. The powder will actually help in silting and classifying the density of the pebbles or of the, the debris that lies in the water. How does it do that? The, the, the particles of the Moringa seed will bind with the dirt particles and increase its weight and that way the dirt particles will now sink and the clear water will remain on the, on the top. And that helps us now to have clean water without necessarily having to wait for or using any other types of you know, inorganic, type, inorganic chemicals to treat the water. How do we prevent the mosquitoes? We prevent mosquitoes by using organic biodegradable oil not mineral oil. Mineral oils are these ones that are used in, uh, in vehicles and whatsoever. But what we use here is just organic biodegradable oil, like cooking oil, like fat or ghee oil, anything to do with, which is as a result of organic processes. So we use that by, you know, we pour that oil on top of the water and that oil will suffocate or it will prevent the flow of uh, oxygen within the water. And that way all the mosquitoes, all the tadpoles and whatsoever that lies in the water will have to die off. So that's why you see this water has no mosquitoes, has no frogs. So farmers can still use the same water to clean pig styes, to irrigate, and also to feed, or to feed animals that are actually on the farm. For poultry, you boil the water slightly to kill the salmonella typhi, and then you use it for feeding poultry birds. And for the cattle, you also have to do the same, because it's way much important when used in, in a cattle project for cleaning the cattle project and also mixing biogas, I mean, uh, operations. 